Good morning, and welcome to St. Augustine's Parish. Please rise to begin the liturgy. We gather with one another as God's people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you. Welcome to all of you and thank you for gathering today. Anybody visiting us who's not from the parish? Who's waving there? Yes, where are you from? Valley, Valley Forge. Valley Forge. Right, it's not the other end of the Schuylkill Expressway. <laughs> Anybody else visiting us? Let us welcome our guests from Valley Forge. <laughs> this past Friday was a very important feast day in the church and particularly for us as Augustinians and particularly for us as a parish community. It's the Feast of St. Augustine. And so today, rather than the regular readings and the prayers of the Sunday, we've been given permission by the Archdiocese to celebrate the Feast of Augustine as we gather at the altar today. And thus the opening hymn about a shepherd, because we hear very much of that in the Gospel that is chosen for this feast. And then Augustine was a shepherd. And in the second reading, we hear Paul speaking to Timothy about a sense of restlessness, that the fight is over. He's ready to be with the Lord. He's won the fight. And in the gospel, we hear Jesus saying that he's the good shepherd. He cares for his sheep. Let's just take a moment and ask for forgiveness for the times that you and I have not built up community, as we hear very much here in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call all of us into community to share all things in common. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you to renew in your church the spirit you gave to the bishop, St. Augustine. Grant that in our thirst for true wisdom, we may never cease to search for you, the living fountain of unending love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The brethren devoted themselves to the apostles' instruction and the communal life, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. A reverent fear overtook them all, for many wonders and signs were performed by the apostles. They shared all things in common. They would sell their property and goods dividing everything on the basis of each one's need. They went to the temple area together every day, while in their homes they broke bread. With exultant and sincere hearts, they took their meals in common, praising God and winning the approval of all the people. Day by day, the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. The word of the Lord. So
a reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. In the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his, his appearing and his kindly power, I charge you to preach the word, to stay, to stay with this task, whether convenient or inconvenient, correcting, reproving, appealing, constantly teaching and never losing patience. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires, will surround themselves with teachers who tickle their ears. They will stop listening to the truth and will wander off to fables. As for you, be steady and self-possessed. Put up with hardship. Perform your work as an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For my part, I am already being poured out like a libation. The time of my dissolution is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, a merited crown awaits me. On that day, the Lord, just judge that he is, will award it to me. And not only to me, but to all who have looked for his appearing with eager longing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good news today is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, My solemn word is this I am the sheep gate. All who came before me were thieves and martyrs, whom the sheep did not heed. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be safe. He will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is no shepherd nor owner of the sheep catches sight of the wolf coming and runs away leaving the sheep to be snatched and scattered by the wolf that is because he works for pay he has no concern for the sheep i am the good shepherd i know my sheep and my sheep know me in the same way that the Father knows me and I know the Father, for these sheep I will give my life. 
I have other sheep. They do not belong to this fold. I must lead them too. And they shall hear my voice. There shall be one flock then, one shepherd. The Father loves me for this, that I lay down my life to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down freely. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. How's everybody? In the first reading that Sally proclaimed from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that in the early communities, all people who believed in Jesus came together and lived in common. They called nothing their own. They shared what they had to each person according to that person's needs. They saw themselves as helping one another get to the kingdom. They saw themselves as a community really concerned about the needs of each other, so much that they didn't hold anything by themselves. This passage reading from the Acts that we just heard is extremely essential and central for St. Augustine, whose feast we celebrate this weekend. Augustine, as I think many of you know, lived a very, by his own words, restless life. A lot of searching. Consequently, some of the words of the presentation of the gifts today about restlessness. Augustine was born in the fourth century in Africa. His mother was Monica. His father was Patrick. Monica kept after Augustine to live the straight and narrow life, to get baptized, to be Christian. Augustine kept fighting it. Not unlike some of us today, perhaps, fighting what God wants us to do. She nagged him so much, he tricked her and left on a boat out of Africa to go to Italy. She didn't know he was gone. He goes to Italy, he goes to Rome, and teaches. And he hears about a bishop, a shepherd, up in Milan named Ambrose, who was very well known for being a public speaker. So Augustine goes up to Milan from Rome not so much to get a shot in the arm spiritually, but perhaps to get some tidbits for public speaking. And what Ambrose had to say really began to touch Augustine's life. And it began a process for him of conversion. Monica finally follows him to Italy and by this time, Augustine is living with a concubine, not a mistress. We say that because it was a person, we don't know her name, but upon whom he was very fond. They didn't cheat on him. But because of different classes in society, it was looked down upon to marry. And with this concubine, with this woman, he had a child. The child's name was Adeodatus. In Latin, that means a gift from God. He's restless. He's looking for truth. All his life as an intellectual person, he was looking for truth. And now he believed he found the truth in the Gospels. And he was baptized by, by 
Ambrose in Milan. If someone were to go to Milan today, in the cathedral there, St. Charles Borneo's body is, downstairs is the baptistry where Augustine and his son, the Dea Datus, and also a friend of his, Presidius, were baptized. He's going way back to Africa. His mother is now with him. And they're in Ostia, a little port south of Rome. And Monica is very sick, and she's dying. She leaves very favorite words to Augustine and says, you keep on going. Leave my body here. Just remember me at the table of the Lord. And they do that. And the remains of Monica are in a place now in Rome. Augustine goes back to Africa. All he wants to do is about the first reading today. Live in community. One mind, one heart, intent upon God, holding all things in common, calling nothing your own. That's all he wanted to do, was what we heard about the early Christians in the first reading. However, God had another plan for him. They needed a bishop to guess. He did not want, he wasn't a priest. He didn't want to be a bishop. He just wanted to live in community life. That's all he wanted to do. And they said, no, Augustine, we need you to be bishop. And finally, he said, OK. Augustine was an intellectual. No one has quoted Vatican II more than he. He wrote something like 300 sermons, 200 letters, and over 100 other different articles, books, including the Confessions, the City of God. At the end of our liturgy today, we'll sing the City of God. Augustine led a life that many of us can relate to. He struggled to find truth. It's an ongoing process. Very honestly, he struggled with sexuality. One of his famous lines, our Lord, give me chastity, but not yet. He wanted it, but not good right now. Augustine wanted to do the, what was best for the common good. He was open to doing what God wanted him to do, even though it wasn't what he thought he wanted to do. So there are many, many aspects of Augustine's life at different times, at different parts of our own stages of our own life, I think to which we can relate. And how beautiful it is that as a parish community, we gather in a building, in a parish, under his patronage. The eight paintings that are across the church here are eight paintings that are of Augustine's life. A lot of people don't realize that. They were painted in the late 1800s. I'm told that five of them in 1897 came here to this building, two in 1898, and one has a, has a name on it and the date on them. Very quickly, the first one is Augustine hearing the words totally lege, picking up the scriptures after he has talked to Ambrose and having moving his life, moving his life towards God, changing from the fornications, changing from the sinfulness, changing from the drunkenness. The second painting is Ambrose painting Augustine, painting Augustine, baptizing Augustine. The third is Monica, his mother. The fourth on this side is Monica's death. Remember, in Ostia, and she says, just leave me here. The first on that side is Augustine giving the rule to the friars, the rule that we Augustinians follow to this day. We in this community right here and every Augustinian community, and very honestly, a number of other religious orders follow his rule, the way of living. And that way of living in community can be applied to any community. When I was working at Merrimack College, we go on retreat with the weekend with the hockey team or the basketball team, and we use that rule as the basis for that retreat and all different things within it. 
to say this applies to this community as a hockey team or a basketball team. The next one on this side is Augustine, it could be a legend, Augustine, but talking to a child on the beach about the Trinity. And he wrote very extensively on the Trinity. The next is Augustine talking at one of the synods. And again, as I said, he was very known for all his writings, all the talk that he gave. And the last one on this side is Augustine's death. And when he died, he, he realized a lot of, and was still feeling, a lot of the sinfulness of his life. And so what did he ask? He asked that the penitential psalms would be put on the wall and told people, don't come bring me meals at certain times because I just want to be looking at the penitential psalms. And then he died. Died believing in the Lord and being with the Lord. As you and I gather today at the Eucharist, to give thanks to God for Augustine's life, asking God through Augustine, or ask, asking God, and Augustine asking God, being our intercessor, to ask God to bless us as a parish community. And that we, we, can all try to live and be of one mind, one heart, concerned about the needs of each other, giving what we need for other people to live, not just materially, but time-wise, psychologically, building one another up, and as Augustine would say, helping each other get to the kingdom. St. Augustine is known to have said that God loves every single one of us so much that if we were the only ones here on earth, God would totally love us. May we take these words of Augustine and many others and try to incorporate them into our lives as we recall Augustine's life this weekend and celebrate the great life that he did. Saints are models for us. Saints are all very human. Saints struggle, and Augustine certainly did. But what he teaches us in those struggles is to keep struggling, to keep the process of finding the truth and finding God. May he inspire each and every single one of us to be able to do that. You and I can't gather today to hear God's word, how the early communities lived, to hear his word of Paul saying, I fought the fight, the fight of restlessness. To hear his word, of Jesus saying, I'm the good shepherd. And Augustine certainly was a shepherd as a bishop. As we hear his word and we share the Eucharist with one another, may we be strengthened. Strengthened and inspired by the many different aspects of Augustine's life to live and build up community as God called each of us to do. At Augustine's baptism in Milan, he professed his faith. May we too profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not me, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, may we now bring our needs, the needs of the community, to our God. For our Pope and Bishops who carry the cross of pastoral care and responsibility, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government and industry who use greed and power to dominate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Arevalo family in Thanksgiving, whom we are remembering in this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of violence in Kenosha, Wisconsin, the healing of Jacob Blake, and the greater respect of life for all people, by all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those lost lives, homes and property in the fires of California, and the hurricanes in Louisiana and Texas, and for all the first responders responding to those affected by these tragedies, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, source of all that is good, may we as a parish community follow the example of St. Augustine and use your gifts to give you glory and build one faith community intent upon you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, the love of St. Augustine reach up to you as to its source. Help us to understand that you have made us for yourselves and, and that our hearts are restless until the, they rest in you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick or suffering in any way, physically, spiritually, or mentally, that they may be comforted by Christ's mercy, especially Myung Hwang, Ralph Oran, Leticia Reyes, Amanda Robertson, and Linda Terno, Patrick C. and Mary Ann C. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, St. Augustine asked us to pray at your altar for his deceased parents, Monica and Patrick. May the deceased Augustinians, especially those who serve here at St. Augustine Parish, and all of our deceased relatives, friends, and benefactors, be one with them in the eternal light, happiness, and peace of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we take a moment and ask God to hear any petitions in our own hearts particularly a petition that we as a parish community may reflect the values, the teachings of Augustine. Loving God, we ask you to hear the petitions which Sally has mentioned for all of us, the ones we've mentioned quietly, and the ones that we assured others that we would pray. We bring them all to you as we do everything. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. The 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beg your clemency, O Lord, that this sacrament of love may be for us the sign of unity and a bond of charity. And we ask this. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with each of you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We offer you our praise on this feast of our Holy Father, St. Augustine, who in his love for truth fell captive to your word. His life became a constant quest to find you with increasing delight, and in finding you, to seek you again with still greater desire. He was a true good shepherd and guided your faithful people with a firm and gentle hand as he sought constantly to renew the image and likeness of your Son in them. St. Augustine established communities of religious, setting before them a perfect pattern of life, of sharing all things in common and having one mind and heart intent upon God. By preaching and writing, he proved himself tireless in proclaiming the good news of salvation. He increased the peaceful unity and fraternity of the church. And so, we join with the heavenly powers in praising you as we proclaim in your majesty without end. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the do fall, <coughs> that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time Jesus was betrayed and willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Archbishop, the religious, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, particularly deceased members of the Alvaro family, my brother Peter, who we buried this past Thursday, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome then into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, with St. Augustine and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the union of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Please don't look on our sins, our selfishness, but look on the faith of your people, the Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. When Augustine died reading the penitential psalms, he died with the peace of Christ. May that peace of the Lord Jesus be with each of you. May we offer that prayer to each other.
Peace. This is no longer bread and wine. It is the body and the blood of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. the body of Christ.
body of Christ. For those of you who cannot be with us, we say a prayer with you that you receive the Eucharist spiritually in your hearts. You desire to be here. In our hearts, we desire you to be with us. We pray that the pandemic will end quickly, as soon as possible. But with you, we pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Two announcements which are just a reiteration of things in my letter to, in the bulletin this weekend. And one is that when the pandemic first started, we asked for volunteers to come at the end of Mass and help sanitize the pews. And we had some people who were very gracious to do that, and all the Masses were really covered. However, no one expected it to last this long, and they have lives to lead and not just be at the 9 o'clock Mass every week or the 7 o'clock Mass. And so they were, they were willing to continue, but they also would like a little freedom. So like, for example, today, the people, those who usually do this today are not able to, and some volunteers have come to another Mass and said that they would do it. So we're looking for other people who may be willing to help, not only at the end of the weekend Sunday Masses, but also perhaps at the uh, after weddings. That would also be a help. The other thing that I wrote in the bulletin at the 11 o'clock Mass next weekend, we're going to have an opportunity to thank Father Bill, the elder, the other Father Bill. As you know, he served here for a year uh, as administrator 
and we were looking for an opportunity. We thought we could have a parish gathering to be able to do that. And who knows when that might be able to be. So we invite all of you who are with us virtually to also be with us and invite your family and friends and invite others to come. As at this Mass next weekend, we will thank Father Bill. The Lord be with you. And I'll be available for confessions immediately after this Mass. And may Almighty God continue to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of the Eucharist is over. May we go in the spirit of St. Augustine. Screaming on Zoom? Or? No, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Oh, how do you do that? How can you get it? Watch the stream. Go to the Paris website, the Paris um, Facebook page. Oh, okay. What was the. Uh, uh, St. Augustine. Uh, Facebook page? Next week will be the last one on Facebook anyway. <laughs> we, can just, we just install a professional camera. Oh, you have your own website then? Yeah. You'll be announcing it, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll announce it next week. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay.